Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless mark zuckerberg confirming that the biden harris administration censored americans and interfered in the last election mark zuckerberg is finally coming clean house republicans have been investigating zuckerberg's meta for over a year and this moment is kind of like during an interrogation when a suspect finally breaks puts up their hands and admits they did it mark zuckerberg in a letter to congress admits the biden harris team bullied them into censoring content even jokes writing quote senior officials from the Biden administration, including the White House, repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor certain COVID-19 content, including humor and satire. I believe the government pressure was wrong, and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. Zuckerberg says they were also wrong to censor the Hunter Biden laptop story, writing, quote, it's since been made clear that the reporting was not Russian disinformation, and in retrospect, we shouldn't have demoted the story. So for Zuckerberg, four years later in 2024, Heinz really is 2020, but for the Biden-Harris White House, it's not. They wouldn't do anything different, saying in a statement reacting to Zuckerberg, quote, our position has been clear and consistent. We believe tech companies and other private actors should take into account the effects their actions have on the American people. The leader of one of the most important social networks in the world just came out and said, I censored Donald Trump in the run up to the election because there were certain elements within the Biden administration and the Biden campaign that encouraged me to do that. That is crazy. Secretary Mayorkas testified to the Senate regarding a big tech back in November 2022. Take a look. You are not pressuring the big tech companies to take down accounts. You are not meeting with them to ask them to censor on your behalf. That is correct, we are not. The federal government may not use private third parties to engage in activities that are unconstitutional. That's exactly what you and this administration are doing. You are leveraging private companies to carry out censorship on your behalf. It's dystopian, but worse than that, it's unconstitutional. Deception has been a problem for man since the serpent first deceived Eve in the garden, as we read in Genesis 3.13. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Jesus, when responding to the disciples' question about a second coming and the end of the age, warned them repeatedly about deception. He indicated that deception would be a serious problem in the last days, and that many people would fall, as we read in Matthew 24, verses 5, 11, 24, and 25. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many and many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Deception is ever present, but the days are coming, and have come, when most people will be deceived. Deception will continue to increase until the day of the Lord and the return of Jesus Christ. When Christ returns, however, the one responsible for the deception will then be prevented from deceiving the nations again until the thousand years have ended as we read in Revelation 23. He cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. After the thousand years are finished, Satan will join the false prophet and the Antichrist, as we read in Revelation 20.10. The devil, who deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. After this, the Lord Jesus will establish his unending kingdom of perfection as we read in Luke 1.32 and 33. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Jesus said this in John 8.31 and 32, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
It began with a post by former President Trump on Truth Social that said, my administration will be great for women and their reproductive rights. Then over the weekend, Trump and his running mate J.D. Vance said they would not support a federal ban on abortion. Vance even said Trump would veto such a bill if it came to his desk. Trump told CBS News the issue is back in the hands of states where it belongs. It's now in the hands of the people. The federal government should have nothing to do with this issue. Now, Donald Trump's view is that we want the individual states and their individual cultures and their unique political sensibilities to make these decisions because we don't want to have a nonstop federal conflict over this issue. Trump also told CBS he would not enforce the Comstock Act to block delivery of abortion drugs. You would not enforce the Comstock Act. I, I would not do this. Tony Perkins, the president of the Family Research Council, responded with this post on X. The Democratic National Committee has the corner on the abortion market. Trump is not only suppressing his own support, He's going to hurt the vast majority of Republican candidates who are 100 percent pro-life. The national president of Students for Life, Kristen Hawkins, posted about the Trump campaign, it's like they're giving a class on how to lose a presidential election. Cowardly, immoral, and politically stupid. Lila Rose, founder of the anti-abortion group Live Action, criticized Trump on her podcast for trying to ingratiate himself with those that are pro-abortion. News flash to the Trump campaign. You're not going to win over the left who already hates you. Now's not the time to try to sound like Kamala Harris. The Trump campaign says Trump's truth social post is in line with his previous positions on abortion. The campaign press secretary said, as President Trump has consistently stated, he supports the rights of individuals in their respective states to determine their laws on abortion. Trump has frequently taken credit for the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade through his appointment of three conservative justices. Trump's abortion controversy comes after a week when Democrats repeatedly went after him on the issue of abortion at the Democratic National Convention and calling for protection of abortion access. Marjorie Dannenfelser, president of SBA Pro-Life America, posted that the short-term urgent threat is a Harris Walls administration promising unlimited full-term abortions. There's a correlation between child sacrifice in the Old Testament and modern-day abortion. The Bible contains the heartbreaking tale of child sacrifice practiced in the name of Molech, a god of the Ammonites. Molech worship was practiced by the Ammonites and Canaanites, who revered Molech as a protecting father figure. Images of Molech were made of bronze, and their outstretched arms were heated and red hot. Living children were then placed into the idol's hands and died there or were rolled into a fire pit below. God gave the people of Israel a dire warning concerning child sacrifice and Molech worship, as we read in Leviticus 20 verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Again, ye shall say to the children of Israel, Whoever of the children of Israel, or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who gives any of his descendants to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Sadly, King Solomon became involved in this horrendous practice, as recorded in 1 Kings 11, 6-8. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not fully follow the Lord, as did his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. And he did likewise for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Later, the evil king Manasseh offered his own son as a sacrifice, as did King Ahaz. The people of Judah also participated in this crime against their own sons, a sin so detestable that God said it had never even crossed his mind, as we read in Jeremiah 32:35. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire to Molech, which I did not command them, nor did it come into my mind that they should do this abomination, to cause Judah to sin. In modern society, unprecedented numbers of children 
have been sacrificed at the hands of abortionists for the sake of convenience, immorality, and pride. Billions of babies have been sacrificed so that their parents can maintain a certain lifestyle. God hates hands that shed innocent blood, and we can be sure that God will judge this horrendous sin. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Israel's raids on the West Bank continuing this morning, including a strike on a mosque killing five militants, as well as a prominent commander. The overall operation, the largest incursion into the occupied territory in over 20 years. With airstrikes, armored vehicles, and earth movers. Israeli officials saying it's a counter-terror operation targeting militants. The fighting, intense. The West Bank now a full-fledged war, said Israel's foreign minister, who called for Palestinians to evacuate. The raid focused on the northern West Bank cities of Jenin, Tulkarum, and the Farah refugee camp near Tubas. The army raided the refugee camp with a large number of soldiers on foot, said this paramedic. They raided from different sides. We were surprised. Palestinian health authorities say at least 17 people have been killed. Fighting in the West Bank isn't new. More than 660 people have been killed there since Hamas's October 7th attacks, according to Palestinian health authorities. On the other side of Israel and Gaza, the war started after Hamas's terror attacks continues. The World Food Program says this vehicle was shot up while approaching a checkpoint. The group now temporarily suspending its operations in Gaza, meaning there will be less food for people who desperately need it. But with violence intensifying in the West Bank, there are concerns it could become the latest casualty of this war. Genesis 16, 1-12 Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. Then Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. So he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abram, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between you and me. So Abram said to Sarai, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarai dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly, so that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man, 
and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Genesis chapter 16 began a prophecy about the baby Hagar is carrying. It is a boy, and she is to call him Ishmael. The rest of the prophecy is less favorable. Even though Ishmael will be the first son born to Abram through the Gentile maidservant Hagar, God's promises went to Isaac, Abram's secondborn, with his true wife Sarai. Though Ishmael will become a great nation, his people will live in conflict with everyone, just as we are witnessing today. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone will be against him. He will live in hostility to his kinsmen. We learn that Ishmael's descendants become the Arabic people. These cultures have been at odds with the Jewish people for millennia. What the world doesn't understand is that this is a spiritual war fought in the physical realm. Ephesians 6.12 For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Satan hates the Jews with a passion. He hates them because God provided both the Bible and the Messiah through them. He hates them because God called them to be his chosen people. He hates them because God has promised to save a remnant of them. He hates them because God loves them. Satan works overtime to plant seeds of hatred in people's hearts toward the Jews. He is determined to destroy every Jew on planet Earth so that God cannot keep his promise to save a great remnant. He tried to annihilate them in the Holocaust. He failed. He will try to destroy them once again during the last half of the tribulation. He will fail again. We're going to start with a story that, if it weren't so horrifically tragic, what's happening in southern Lebanon, this, this the, the hypocrisy would be absolutely laughable. The UN Security Council renewed its peacekeeping, I'll put that in quotes, its peacekeeping mission in southern Lebanon. It just renewed it yesterday. In that, they failed to condemn Hezbollah or even mention the Iranian-backed terror group. Well, meanwhile, the IDF destroyed a terrorist command center inside a West Bank mosque. They found explosives and weapons along with a display honoring terrorists who've attacked Israel. The Israel Defense Forces say they found and destroyed a terrorist command center inside a mosque in the West Bank. IDF drone footage shows displays honoring dead terrorists and equipment to make bombs as well as several explosive devices. This, as top Hamas official Khaled Mashal is calling for suicide attacks against Israelis. At the United Nations Security Council Wednesday, members renewed the mandate to maintain peacekeepers in southern Lebanon, but failing to specifically mention Hezbollah or condemn the terror group. Despite the U.N. mission, the peacekeepers have not taken action to stop Hezbollah from launching some 8,000 missiles and drones into Israel the last 10 months. We call on this council to finally enforce Resolution 1701 in full and to recognize Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. The U.S. representative at the U.N. said none of the nations present would put up with what Israel has had to endure. No member of this council facing a brutal terrorist organization on its border would tolerate daily attacks and displacement of tens of thousands of its own people. Since the U.N. forces are not stopping Hezbollah, Israel warned Lebanon that it must do the job itself. I have a message for the Lebanese people. You and your government have a choice to make. Confront Hezbollah today or watch as your country is dragged into chaos and destruction. More than 60,000 Israelis are displaced from their homes in the north, forced to flee Hezbollah's almost daily attacks. When will it be the end of the story? only when we can bring back security and the residents to their homes safely. Meanwhile, in Gaza, Israel says it recovered the body of a soldier killed on October 7th and held by Hamas. Some 300 vehicles with families and friends of hostages drove from Tel Aviv to Kibbutz Be'eri, one of the hardest-hit communities on October 7th. Some ran past the security fence to get closer to Gaza, and others called out to their loved ones in captivity. I need you 
to know that I am giving you now the blessing I give you every single morning when I pray for you and every Friday night. May God bless you and keep you. May God shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Some Ukrainian officials are gearing up for a key meeting at the Pentagon later this week. Their goal, getting the green light to hit long-range targets in Russia. But standing in the way is a hurdle on the use of U.S. weapons. What we're seeing in Ukraine at the moment, both last week through next week, is perhaps some of the most significant military and diplomatic moves we've seen since the start of the war. Look, militarily, we have seen some of the worst series of strikes against Ukrainian civilians uh, since the war began. But diplomatically, just yesterday, President Zelensky also said that he was now open for negotiations next year, and he talked about what he would need to get there. Now, the Russian onslaught we've seen over the last few days has killed at least 13 people. It's injured dozens. It's destroyed hotels, homes, critical infrastructure across many Ukrainian regions. And it is as a result of the Russian response to this Ukraine Ukrainian incursion into the Russian Kursk area. That is where Ukrainians now hold 500 square miles of Russian territory and are still advancing. Now, President Zelensky said yesterday that the invasion into Russia, or the incursion, how you see it, was part of his victory plan, one that he had put together and that he plans to present to President Biden next month that could lay the groundwork for negotiations next year. It is the first time that he has admitted that. But for that negotiation to succeed, Zelensky has said that the Ukrainians need permission to use long-range U.S. missiles that will allow them to hit Russian bases, hit military depots, all two to 400 miles inside Russia and that that would seriously hold back the Russian assaults. Now, so far, the Biden administration has denied them that ability. They feared an escalation. They say that Russian forces are now too far back inside Russia uh, and that they fear this escalation. But President Zelensky has said that fear is unfounded. That being said, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov again yesterday warned against the U.S. government giving them these weapons or permission to use them, saying it risked World War III. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to four billion. This morning, in the peak of summer mosquito season, two families are sounding alarms about rare mosquito-borne illnesses and the dangers they pose. In suburban St. Louis, 18-year-old John Proctor VI, known as BB, lies paralyzed in a hospital bed on a ventilator. His father says it started earlier this month when the recent high school graduate complained about headaches and dizziness. Then 
symptoms escalated. His speech was slurred. Uh, he couldn't raise his arms up and he couldn't smile. Hospital doctors placing the previously healthy teen in intensive care. The diagnosis, West Nile virus from a mosquito bite, paralyzing him from the neck down. The family praying he'll recover. This as the family of Stephen Perry, a 41-year-old New Hampshire man killed by the rare triple E virus, speaks out, writing in his obituary, the director of nursing services and avid Boston sports fan was stricken by a sudden and rare brain infection and died after a week in the hospital, adding Stephen left those that he loved far too soon. It marks New Hampshire's first reported human case of Eastern Equine Encephalitis, or Triple E, in a decade. Four other states also reporting cases. The virus is rare, but has a mortality rate of approximately 30%, while experts say West Nile is also on the rise. Among those sickened, Dr. Anthony Fauci, hospitalized for a week with the virus, quoted saying he felt like he'd been hit by a truck, adding, I've never been as sick in my life, ever. In Chicago, pest control company Mosquito Joe is seeing a 20% spike in new customers, fearful after seeing a case reported in neighboring Wisconsin. When people call you, are they mentioning these viruses specifically? Most of them are. A lot of people say, just come out, just take care of it. Homeowner April Manhurt had her property sprayed to protect her dog, Charleston. I think even more than just like concern for myself, also my dog, and, and there's, you don't know how it affects you until it's too late. As ominous clouds rolled in and palm trees clung to their roots, Typhoon Chan Chan made landfall in Japan. Torrential rains and tempestuous winds swept across Kyushu, the southernmost main island, on Thursday morning. With gusts reaching more than 200 kilometres per hour, upending structures and vehicles and threatening large-scale disaster. And across southern, western and central Japan, Nearly one million people were ordered to evacuate as authorities sounded the highest category of warning for what's been deemed the country's most powerful typhoon of the year. Unprecedented storm winds, high waves and storm surges are expected. The highest level of caution is required. Shan Chan has already left nearly a quarter of a million households without power, injured dozens and claimed several lives. Three members of a family died on Wednesday before the typhoon made landfall, when the slow-moving system brought heavy rains and caused a landslide, burying a house in the central city of Gamagori. Two people were rescued, one with serious injuries. Psalm 107, 33 and 34. He turns rivers into a wilderness, and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness, for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. Northern Greece is facing a significant water crisis owing to prolonged drought conditions exacerbated by successive heat waves and a lack of rainfall. Until recently, Lake Picrolimni in northern Greece was a popular destination for mud baths, but this summer it's just cracked earth. The shoreline of Lake Doirani, which straddles Greece's northern border with North Macedonia, has receded by 300 metres in recent years. In Halkadiki, the olive grove of Demetrius Papadakis is also suffering from drought. Six weeks before harvest, he and his son have to transport water by truck. And in near Potadia town in Halkadiki, a very popular tourist area, locals use all sorts of ways to cope with frequent household water cuts. The EU's emergency management service says acute drought conditions extend from the Black Sea westward into northern Greece. The stench of this silvery blanket of death is unbearable, according to the mayor of Volos. As authorities plow on with cleaning up hundreds of thousands of dead fish after they washed up on beaches and in the port. The city and the Pagastikos Gulf are facing an ecological disaster. Volos's mayor and others blame the Greek government for not dealing with the problem before it reached the city. By, for example, putting up nets to keep the freshwater fish from leaving their riverbeds. While an investigation is underway, the fish are thought to have died upon contact with salt water. The environmental disaster is due, experts believe, to mass floods last year further north. The lake waters of those historic floods are now drying up, pushing the fish downstream. Locals fear that this second environmental crisis could further hurt tourism in the central Greek city. After the flood, our city was devastated. 
The sea in the Gulf have now been filled with fish from Lake Kala. Our revenue has dropped by 80% compared to last year. Environmentalists also fear that so many decomposing fish could harm marine life. The second potential issue is widespread pollution from pathogens that could develop, potentially harming marine mammals in the Gulf, such as dolphins and turtles. The environmental disaster comes as Greece is recovering from its worst forest fire this year. Experts warn that the area around Athens can no longer afford to lose its forests to extreme blazes and droughts, which, like the floods, are linked to climate change. The world is baffled at the events taking place in the weather, and yet it was foretold 2,000 years ago in Bible prophecy that this would happen. Satan, the great deceiver, often tries to front-run God by giving people wrong ideas ahead of time about what is prophesied to happen. Satan has tricked mankind into believing that climate change is real, and in turn has blinded many people to the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we read in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, all these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16, 21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16, 8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Climate change is simply Satan's counter to Jesus' signs of his return and the end of the age. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Don't let Satan blind you to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The extreme weather the world has been witnessing is not climate change. It is God letting us know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is returning. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep. God grant that you 
will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God! What if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.